Welcome back. Hello again. In this final video, we are going to discuss bone fractures. So following this, I'd like you to be able to describe the differences between the main categories of fractures, the general process of bone fracture repair, and treatments for fractures. So we know there is remodeling throughout life. In some cases, with an injury, we're going to need a little bit more. So this is sort of like the full demolition of a bathroom and really rebuilding it back up. So let's talk about these fractures in terms of their categories. The first category is the type of break. This is sort of the shape of the break. So we can see there are oblique and transverse breaks. And this last one over here is called minuted, which is to say shattered. So you see multiple fragments in a comminuted fracture. And it's important to categorize these because in this type of fracture where there is shattering, so it may be important to remove some of those fragments. Now the next type of fracture you only see in juveniles, and it is an incomplete fracture. So I want you to think back to a summer day when it's not snowing. Maybe you're out in the woods going for a walk. Maybe you're with some friends around a bonfire. Either way, for some reason, you want to stick. Maybe you want it to roast marshmallows. Maybe you want it to climb steep hills. Whatever it is, you're on the lookout for a stick. So what happens is, let's, start, let's find a nice branch. To pull off of a tree. I do not condone breaking trees down, but let's say in this case you need one. So you go over to this tree, you find a small one, and you go to bend it, and you go to wiggle it back and forth. It's just bending and shredding, and you're kind of twisting it out, and then you finally break it. So this, a green stick or a you know uh, a younger tree branch is very similar to what we see with the green stick fracture where it has a lot more flexibility so that break isn't complete and we only see partial breaks so the next category is related to the positioning of the ends of bone so non-displaced fractures the are simpler and these ends are already aligned and ready for healing. Whereas a displaced fracture, we can see those ends are far from one another and they would need to be realigned to encourage healing. So impacted is where the broken ends are pushed into each other from a considerable force in one direction. So the final category is regarding the penetration of skin which is helpful when determining a treatment. So open fractures we see penetrate through the skin and would be visible versus a closed fracture. You wouldn't necessarily know unless you knew your anatomy and could palpate the bone properly, whether or not that bone was broken as you, it would be internal. So what is the treatment for a fracture? You put a cast on it, right? So look at this adorable little squirrel. He fell 70 feet out of a tree onto cement and just had this little broken leg. He's so cute. I'm always impressed by the ability of squirrels to fall super high heights and be totally fine. Anyway, so what are we doing when we put a cast on a bone? So we're setting a fracture or reducing a fracture. What we're doing is setting those bone, the fractured ends up to meet each other to encourage that repair. And now there are two types of reduction, either closed or open. So closed reductions would be done through manual manipulation, realigning the bones and putting a cast on it. More serious injuries might require screws and bolts to hold those in place. We can see here and here holding that fracture back together to encourage healing. So the most important thing about either one of these is to reduce the fracture and stop the bone from moving from one another. 
So fracture repair starts with a lot of blood, and then the bone goes through a process very similar to what we see with endochondral ossification. But what's different is that here we see a fibrocartilaginous callus or model holding these bones together, which is then replaced by a bony callus. So in endochondral ossification, we'll remember that this was hyaline cartilage versus here we see fibrocartilage. So eventually the fibrocartilage and the bony callus will be removed through resorption via osteoclasts and the structure of the bone will be restored. So what's really interesting though is that even if bones are not reduced or set properly, they still heal and this callus still forms. So I wanted to show you a couple examples of breaks that fully repaired themselves, but maybe not in the most effective way. So we can see here a large break of the tibia and the fibula, and these passed one another, the two sides. So this was a displaced fracture, but because those bones were close to one another, a bony callus formed to pull those pieces together. We see something similar here in the fibula. Over here, we can see the remnants of a bony callus on a broken fibula. And here, this is a normal clavicle. And here, we can see, again, how these displaced parts of a fracture fuse together in a way that looks different from the normal anatomy. So what this might look like in someone who doesn't get a fracture set or it isn't set properly is it may change the shape of the clavicle, for instance. You may see asymmetry there. Um, and it could also change the functioning of the joints involved with the bone that has reformed in this new way. Okay, so this is our last question for this system for these video, this video set. Um, and what I want you to do is look at this radiograph that shows a fracture of the femur. And I'd like you to determine the categories that you think best describe the fracture and answer that last question. So pause so you can write your answers in. So what type of break would you say this is? What shape? So I would say it is a oblique fracture. You can kind of see running along on an oblique line. Now how about the displacement of fragments? Now I'm not an expert in categorizing fractures, but I'm going to put this one as slightly displaced. They haven't passed one another, they aren't fully away from one another, but they aren't directly on one another either. So I don't think this is the scientific term used by people categorizing fractures, but we're gonna go with it. Now, what about the penetration of skin? This is a closed fracture. So you can kind of tell that there's just sort of a con Continuity, you might see a little bit of a difference in the shape of the leg, but you wouldn't see a bone sticking through the skin. Okay, so what is the non-pathological feature shown here at the blue arrow? So that is an epiphyseal plate. So this radiograph came from a two-year-old who fell from a high bed. So the major thing they saw with the radiograph is this fracture, of course. But interesting to us, we can now note the presence of epiphyseal plates and have an idea that this person is not fully developed or as tall as they would be near um, in adulthood. So wonderful job, you made it through all of these videos. From here, I want you to please post any questions you have on Piazza if anything's unclear. Come to office hours if you'd like to talk anything out and have a great rest of your day.